Welcome to The Real World. My name is Cameron, joined by Carson. Carson is here. And we are ready to talk about the best super villain casting. We've already done superhero casting. That's right. That was a fun time. That now was... we're jumping into our favorite villain castings. Here we go. Thank you so much for joining us here on The Real World Podcast. Make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified of all our videos. If you're a movie fan, you're in the right place. Today, if you're a comic book movie fan, you're definitely in the right place. Super villains is what we're talking about that's today. That's right, that's right. The best supervillain casting. So it's more Not about necessarily the, the character. Right, it's the actor It's that fitting the role. It's that perfect storm of we got the right guy to do it at the right time, yep. the right character for him. Yep, exactly. So I'm excited to get into this. This is going to be a fun list. It's going to be a top 10. It's going to be a draft. So if you can take some of mine, I can take some of that's yours. That's right. With lists like these... It being a draft always yeah. makes it a little competitive. It does. I enjoy that. It does. It's fun. It's fun. All right. You ready to jump in? I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. We're jumping right in. We want your list below. Um, so make sure you leave a comment. But we're going to kick things off. Why don't you start it off? No, 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 no. I insist. Take it, away sure? with, take it away with your number one. Okay. Okay. Here we I, go. I'm curious to see what your list is at all. My number one super villain casting of all time is Michael Fassbender as Magneto. Really? Yeah. He's my favorite. That's, this that's incredible. You know, we, I, that's honestly it's one I didn't even think of. Really, because he is so Magneto. He's he is the character. He is right? so he, the character. Yes. I didn't even consider <laughs> right, it. Right. I know. That's what I'm saying. He totally fits the role. He plays the role with so much conviction. You're with him the whole way through. Yeah. Even though he's the villain, yep. you're, you totally root for him. Definitely. I mean, especially through first class. Yeah. Um, but even in the days of future past, um, you know, even. Even the movies that I, I I don't think they did as great a job with him in like Apocalypse and, and Dark Phoenix, I still think he's doing things that are compelling in yeah, that for sure. Even for though sure. the materials maybe not as great as it could have been, um, so he's just a great actor. Everything I've seen him in, he's great. But this role particularly, he really humanizes yes, the character exactly, exactly, exactly in a way that I think even even Ian McKellen <laughs> didn't really get the opportunity to do. Correct, I agree. I agree. I think it's. It's yeah, McKellen. He's fantastic as an actor, of course, but and especially it's what he was given. When it comes to McKellen, it's like him and Patrick Stewart are yeah. what make their characters right, work. Right, right, exactly. Their dichotomy and their mm -hmm. kind of banter mm -hmm. are what mm -hmm. make their characters really click for sure. And here, as great as uh, he and McAvoy are both as great, great as together. Mac is right. with McAvoy, but he works better by own. himself. Yeah, exactly. He so he, well. he does such a great job. So. Had to pick Fastbender. He was the one that really jumped to the top of my list as soon as I started yeah. making this list pretty quickly because Great. he's my favorite part of those X-Men movies. Awesome. So, awesome. I'm glad to hear it. That's that's a big number one take. Yeah. Uh, honestly, a little unexpected. Yeah. A little yeah, unexpected. I think not many and I think my number one will be a little unexpected as well. I'm going with Mr. Glass. Now, this is a slight spoiler. Wow. A slight spoiler for Unbreakable. Wow. But I'm going with Mr. Glass from okay. Unbreakable. Samuel L. Jackson yes. elevates this material right. to what is, in my opinion, the greatest supervillain performance of all time. It's fantastic. Uh, we've talked about Unbreakable many times. Oh, yeah, it's one of our favorite, favorite movies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's terrific. Yep. Uh, that movie just, everything about it, the pacing, the, the filmmaking, the craft behind it yeah. is phenomenal. And really the writing. And the Definitely. writing is where Mr. Glass really steps to the forefront. Definitely. He begins and ends the film. Uh-huh. He, it's really a film about him. Oh, yeah. 100%. Um, he's more the protagonist than David Dunn, mm. who is who is a right. much more passive character right. throughout. You're right. Uh, Mr. Glass, finding that he orchestrates all of this, that he's kind of the mastermind. Yeah. He's, it's the ultimate mastermind right. villain. Right, right, right. Really. Yes. Um, and it's just terrific. I, I think at this point in Samuel Jackson's career, he was really gunning it for... He talks a lot about how he's kind of competing against Harrison Ford. <laughs> yeah, he kind of wants his the box career. Box office kings. Box office yeah. kings, exactly. <laughs> um, and yeah, kind of at this point, coming out of the '90s, it's like, yeah, he's doing those. He's really putting a hundred percent into every role he's given, and he's doing very unique roles. It's yeah. not just all the cookie cutter. It's, it's this role. to Mace Windu, right? It's Mace yeah. Windu to to Nick Fury. Yeah, you know? right. It's always something different. It's crazy, and he always brings a hundred percent to it. And yeah. he definitely brought. I feel 110% to Mr. Glass. I agree. And controversial opinion as it may be, he's really almost just as good in Glass. Sure. I think his, his performance, performance never glass, falls off. That's for sure. His performance in Glass is so good. Yeah. He's um, terrific because he's a comic book fan. 
Yeah, he gets which, it. Which, he gets what which to us watching to it mm-hmm. immediately makes us yep. sympathize with him yep. and love him, especially how that movie begins. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's For the sure. most sympathetic villain. Yeah. He's the most lovable character. Yeah. And he's so sad well, throughout the whole movie. You think he's the hero <laughs> for most of the film. You I think know. He's the kind of mentor. And exactly. he ends up being exactly. a complete villain. He really, story. he really just, unfortunately, <laughs> and it really is, it's an unfortunate <laughs> position to be yeah, in. Yeah. He just takes it too far. Yeah. He right. just takes it a little too yep. far into it's obsession. True. Yep. Great pick. We love him. We love um, Mr. Glass. Sam Jackson, Mr. Glass, <laughs> yeah. Elijah Price, great right. character. Right. Um, all right. Well, that was my number three. So I'm glad you didn't take my number two, but okay. you th- did take my number three. Okay. So I'm going to have to move things around a little bit. But <laughs> my number two is from Man of Steel. Ooh. It is Michael Shannon as General Zod. Good pick. What a great actor. I'll tell you, I just did a great Zack Snyder rewatch just yeah, a moment at a time. Right. And he's a standout. Oh, big time. I mean, I am, I am I'm blown away <laughs> yeah. by, by what he was able to do with yeah. so little. Yeah, he's not on screen. He's a given ton. so little. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you can tell it's just like the mythology yes. behind the character, the, the history, whole character. Yes, the history. between him and, and, him and Jor-El, Jor-El yeah. is felt it in is. the one scene that they're in. Big time. They're in two scenes right. together. Right. It's true. And you feel it in his scene okay. with with Laura. Oh yeah. It's terrific. It's one of the terrific. best. I will find yeah. him. He brings such gravitas to oh, that role. Oh man, big time, big time. Great actor. Which, great performance. Which I mean, for every villain. You want them to contrast the hero. And he perfectly does. Perfectly. If he represents everything that Krypton was. Sure. And, that was bad and, about Krypton. Yeah. And all of the confidence Clark doesn't have. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah he picks up the superpowers quickly. Much yeah. more quickly. You know, he's a soldier. He's bred for war. It's literally he the knows, purpose, the he purpose knows his purpose he in life. Yeah. He knows his purpose yeah. in life. Unlike Clark. Nothing is going get to get in the way of his purpose. Yeah. Of him accomplishing his mission. And, he's uh, the polar opposite of Clark in this movie. Yes, yes, exactly. And he's very commanding presence, very sure of himself. Yeah, all of that, all of that stuff that just makes him a, a charismatic leader. Yeah. You know, that you want to follow. Sure. You know, you get why all the Kryptonians are following him. Yeah, yeah. Because he has a mission. He knows what he's doing. He knows his purpose. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, great character, great actor, great design. You know, the suit and everything, I think, looked great. And uh, yeah, this is, I mean, man, one of the best. You've got him up high as number two. He's number two. This is your favorite Superman villain casting. It is. It's, it's high time. praise. I know. It's high praise. Considering all the great Lex Luthers we've had. I know. I know. All the other great characters. But yeah, this is my number one for sure. That's terrific. Like, very, very good. All right. Uh, what do you have at pick. your number two? Uh, when, when I, that, that was when I actively took out of my list because okay. I knew you'd you knew I'd have it. Yeah. I expect it to be your number one though. I expect you to have my number four. I'm curious if it's next. Well, I don't think you'll have this one because my number oh. two is Syndrome from The Incredibles. Oh, I knew you were going to have that one somewhere. I didn't know it would be this Syndrome high. Syndrome is wow. here to save the day. Okay. So Syndrome, he he, he does one of, one of my favorite villainy things. Mm. He is, yes, he's the opposite of the hero mm-hmm. in the sense that he has no powers. Yeah, right. But he also is, he outwits his enemies. Yeah. Right. In unexpected ways. Yeah, that's true. Uh, his origin being tied to the hero mm. is another like classic villain thing. Yes, love that. That I, I just love. So there's a lot of like classic tropes about mm. Syndrome in here. Right. right. But he also subverts them. Yeah, it's true. By really, at his heart, wanting to be the hero. Yeah, exactly. And that's what makes you kind of yeah. like love to watch yeah. Syndrome. Mm-hmm. Because he wants to be this heroic figure, and really, it's his his cowardice, right, right, that prevents him from doing that. Yeah, and his hubris. Yeah, it's true. So it's really cool because Mister Incredible at this point has kind of been humiliated. Yeah, he's kind of lost right. his mojo mm-hmm. in a way. Mm-hmm. And Syndrome is nothing but hubris. He's yeah, nothing but right. ego. Right, right. So it's kind of like Mister Incredible wants to be like Syndrome. For a bit of the movie, mm, yeah, and has to yeah. realize that that's the path he's going yeah. down. He's becoming right. like Syndrome, right, right, right. He's becoming a yeah. phony hero. He's, yeah. he's, you know, getting all the money and the mm-hmm. cars, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's just terrific. Yeah. Um, one of those great lines is, "You killed off real heroes so you could pretend to be one." Yeah. And of yeah. course, uh, Buddy Pine, his his whole philosophy is, yeah. once everyone's super, no one will be. Yeah. He wants to make the world right. depend on his yeah. technology. And it's very cool. It's, it it's is. And, and Jason Lee's voice yeah. 
has that perfect because he plays young syndrome and old syndrome exactly and he has he's, that there's he's that got the enthusiasm there. yes but then the he has beginning? that jaded kind of like cynical very cynical like just sinister yeah yeah menacing, uh-huh but kind of silly like he balances all that really well yeah. like because he, it's a he very, is scary yeah. at times but he's still funny and kind it's of a role goofy. that it's a role that can very easily go over the yeah, top you can right, very easily right, make right. it a cartoonish yes. thing but exactly he gets moments of like humanity moments yeah. of questioning yeah. things right um and well, there's that scene with mirage of course he questions yeah. him and challenges yeah. him and when yeah, he's there's, pushing there's a lot Incredible. of good layers to it yeah it's terrific know? it's terrific great, great choice um i'm debating between two i'm gonna go with i'm gonna go with my heart on this is your number three my number three was gonna be mr glass i had okay. something else at four <laughs> I'm leaning towards my number five pick, though, and that's what I'm going to go with. It's Alfred Molina as Doc Ock. Ooh, you took mine. Spider-Man. Oh, is that your next that's one? That's great. I'm glad. I'm really? glad you took it because he's terrific. He's so good. He's he, excellent. You know, I I like a villain that you can sympathize with. You know, I think those yeah. are those are the most effective villains that you really remember. Sure. You know, I mean, Michael Shannon as Zod, he's pretty much just a bad guy. But he has, again, like in his mind, a reason for doing sure, what he's doing sure, and all sure. that. But Alfred Molina is so sympathetic because, again, he he's the mentor for Spidey. And he's, I mean, he's, he's living the life Peter wants. He's living the life Peter wants. He's got the girl and he's doing the science thing. Yes, yes. He's found a balance in right. his life. Exactly. But Peter, of course, has that third element of his life, which is Spider-Man. Exactly. Throws and his whole life out of whack. worry yeah. is so good about him giving up Spider-Man. And he's he's taking advice from, from you know, Otto Octavius, yep. this doctor that he's looked up to on how to live and how to... <laughs> Had a romance MJ, yeah, and of course, all these things, and so they just endear you to this character, and then this tragedy happens, yeah, where you know the science experiment go- goes wrong, and he's humiliated, and his wife dies, yeah. yeah, and that's what caused him to break. And of course, there's that whole thing about the chip and all that, but I focus more on <laughs> this this guy. He just his mind broke at this moment, totally, yeah, and he's allowed this creation of his to take him over exactly turn him exactly. into this monster yeah yeah and in uh, the same way great. i think i think peter is also uh, afraid of spider-man taking over his life exactly so exactly. you always have these great yep. kind of layered parallels stories parallels yeah. between uh-huh. these these heroes and villains that yeah. are so important they are and alvin Milena. He's the best. He's, he's so likable. He's a classically he's so... trained actor. He really is. I love that. I love yes. that clip. That's right. They, they interview him when he was on uh, No Way Home. Yes, yes. And it's him in the lineup of all the other villains. <laughs> right. And they're going down the line. Why are you in the movie? Why are you in the movie? It's right. all like, oh, it's the script. I love the script. It was so right. good. Right. Man, I just really wanted to do justice to my character again. Right. I was just so excited to be back. Yeah. It's all the way down to Millie. It's the last one. He says, well, I'm a classically trained actor. <laughs> So I did it all for the money. That's <laughs> <laughs> just great. That's so good. Yeah, he's a great, yeah. great actor, great guy. And he's witty tell. and 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 personal oh, in yes. the movie. Oh yeah, hundred percent. His his personality and his performance carries mm-hmm. through. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I agree. So yeah, he had to make the list. That's where he's at. Correct. Right. Um, subway fight, one of the best superhero movie fights of all time. Yeah, yeah, it's a great one. Absolutely. The train. All right, what are you going with for your number three? So for my number three, because you took Doc Ock, which is terrific. It's a good pick. Um, I'm not embarrassed to go with my number three, which I've debated much in my mind whether or not it should go higher, okay. but it's going to be Mark Hamill as Joker yes. and Batman Mask. I the I, that was my number four, so of course, I'm glad yeah. you picked him. So important. <laughs> uh, this is a, a critical performance <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, for the character. Yeah. I think it inspired a lot of different takes on Joker. For sure. Um, it's that perfect balance. We talked about what Hamill did with Batman or with, with Joker. Yeah. He did that perfect balance of this big theatrical Cesar Romero kind of right. uh, clown man yep. and a really sinister yeah. and dark hearted yeah. evil villain. Yeah. It's pretty sadistic. It's great. It's <laughs> yeah. great. It's yeah. terrific. It's and uh, yeah, in Mask of the Phantasm, we get uh, not necessarily an origin, but we get yeah, kind of a do, kind though. of a uh, kind of an um, a, allusion yeah. to to kind of the kind of person this version right. of Joker has always been. Right, exactly. Um, and he's he's fundamentally always been an irredeemably bad person. Yes, exactly. That's what I think a lot of people misunderstand about Joker right. a lot of the times. Yeah. Um, he's not. 
Well, he's been reinterpreted he's not... that way sure, in some sure. of the comics. As yeah, he had one bad day and he went bad. Sure, but he's always been a pretty sure. good guy. Yeah. Whereas this yeah. kind of doesn't this solidifies that. <laughs> this solidifies that he's a yeah. bad person. Right. And these right. kind of bad people always exist. Yeah. He's a bad and... person that just kind of went crazier. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um. So yeah, it's a, it's a very operatic and grand performance. Unrecognizable. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. if you watch yeah, Star yeah, Wars course. and then you watch this, you're going to go, what? <laughs> is this the same guy? There's no way. Yeah. Hamill's very much the, the chameleon of yeah, voices. For sure. Uh, but we love it. We love it. It's terrific. Indeed, it is. Joker, my number three. I'm staying in the Batman world. Okay. Um, He's got a terrific rogues gallery. The a, lot best, of, a lot of big performances. You know, we did there. Batman, best Batman movie villains. Yes, we did. Recently. Yeah. This is a little different because it's more focused on the casting than that, the character. It's that performance. Yeah. For me, it's Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh, as Catwoman in Batman Returns. See, I knew you were going Batman Returns. I thought you were going to go Dana DeVito. It, it, it's honestly, it's kind of a toss up <laughs> for me between those two. Yeah, yeah. But I Michelle have to just... give it to Pfeiffer because she it out. she's such a unique take. Yeah. Um, on Selena Kyle, mm-hmm. and I love seeing her transformation. Yeah. You know, I mean, you see her in the office with Max Shrek, you mm-hmm. know, and all of that. And then you see her home life, yeah, you know, yeah. and with her cats and all that. And then she's very much a third lead in that movie. Oh, hundred percent. Oh yeah. I would say she's, yeah, easily, easily. Yeah. The, those three, the penguin, the, the bat, the cat and the penguin. <laughs> right. Right. Of um, course. The, the way she carries herself. Yeah. The way she looks obviously, yep. but this confidence that comes out yeah. when she gets, yeah transformed into the Catwoman. Frankly, it's it's a character evolution that we really haven't seen since no. for the character. No, no, no. For sure not. Absolutely not. Because Anne Hathaway was playing Selena Kyle already, already as, 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 established. The, as the Catwoman. I mean, yeah. there's no difference between the two, right. really. Exactly. She puts on a face of, hey, I'm Selena Kyle. In whatever situation she's sure. in, she's sure. always putting on faces. Right, you know? right, right, right. right. Um, but this is a character where she's just kind of a lonely um you know secretary i mean sure for this, sure for this kind of a bumbling know, corporation yeah yeah, yeah yeah kind of a bumbling shy, character. shy very yeah, innocent yeah. and then becomes this just vivacious crazy yeah. enraged yeah i love there, there are little character. moments where you can you can tell even when before she's turned yeah she's kind of like behind the back just like you can see the anger kind of yeah, under the bubbling surface. up yeah. right right it's yeah. always there but then when it fully comes out mm-hmm. and she's doing all these acrobatics and yeah. using the whip and yep. she really used to learn to use the yeah. whip yeah. have you seen behind the scenes footage it's crazy what yeah. she Ter- learned terrifying to do. um and the way she plays off batman of course and then how she later plays off penguin yeah it's just a great performance it's a terrific it's role so absolutely. she so yeah. became that character she's got so, gave much, so much to do to in that movie too so that's yeah. my number what was it that four yeah so you're now you're four. at your four okay my number four i'm gonna have to go with our good friend willem dafoe as green goblin Good pick. We love Gabby. You gotta have Willem gotta have Gabby, and this is Gabby from <laughs> Spider Man. Of, of course, the original. It's not No Way Home. It's the original. Um, great in No Way Home. He is great. He's the best part yeah. of that film. But he's the only reason he's the best part of that film is because he's playing his character from Spider Man <laughs> right. One. Exactly. Um, this is a really interesting role because this this is a time before the MCU mm. when you're really playing the first big Marvel villain. I mean, think about that's it. That's a good point. Yeah. Think about it. We have, kind of we have no, we have no. We had Ian McKellen yeah. as Magneto, but that's a, such a different type of role. Very different kind of movie. Different kind of movie. You're right. Absolutely. This is your first big Marvel villain. Yep. Yep. I mean, right up against Spider Man, too. Yeah. Your yeah. first huge big Marvel character. hero. Right. You know? Intimidating. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's a huge role, and no no one could tackle it like Willem Dafoe. Nobody. He went all in. I mean, th- this guy, he, he, it was, he did not hold back yeah. anything from this performance mm-hmm. it goes all in yeah it's one of those where he's just there's scenes where he's just screaming it's all in and then it's all out <laughs> there's scenes where he's <laughs> freaking out yeah yeah i mean the the transformation scene you know yep. back to formula yeah i mean all yeah. of like there's so many iconic lines in, and from me, his character yeah. in this in this role from a, from a performance point of view it's all of his mirror sequences uh, that really stand out yes. as phenomenal the dual personality really getting into his head and in yeah. one shot yeah him going from norman right who's kind of like afraid of what yeah. he's become yeah yeah remorseful of his actions yeah. uh-huh. 
to Goblin. Yeah, just and you see the Goblin evil just in it. Full on. Evil. He looks like a Goblin, <laughs> just naturally. He didn't need the mask, folks. <laughs> didn't need the Power Rangers suit. <laughs> you could just put green makeup on him; it'd look fine. This man did, looks like a Goblin. Do a better job with that in No Way Home. Sure, the look sure. is a little yeah. better. But um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's an iconic performance. Yeah. It's an iconic it's role. Cool. It'll always be remembered. Yep. Um, and honestly, it's it's one of the best to come out of any Marvel production, in my opinion. Absolutely. And I'm going to stay in the Spidey verse. Okay. Okay. With in, <laughs> into the Spider verse. Ooh, into into the Spider verse. Okay. A lot of villains there to pick from. Sure. Yeah. You got Prowler, Marshall Ali, fantastic as Prowler. Of course. Of course. You got Scorpion. Yep. You know, you got Tombstone. That's right. All these underrated. They are in the movie. Yeah. Underrated. Yeah. A character. They don't have much to do. They don't they have are. many lines. Yeah. But I'm going with Liev Schreiber mm-hmm. as Wilson Fisk, That's right. a.k.a. the Kingpin. The block himself. What a performance. Yes, yes. Wow. The, I can't tell a Tim. First of all, if you know, he, he's Sabretooth as well from yeah. X-Men Origins Wolverine. Yeah. Um, one of the few highlights of that film. <laughs> um, but he's one of the many highlights of Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah. This performance is, again... Talking about a transformation. You can't tell it's him. Yep. Um, but he gives the character so much gravitas. So With much, so little. So much weight. Yeah, he that's such true. A small part he of does movie. not have a ton of screen time. I mean, that movie is so you, fo- laser focused on Miles yep. and Peter and all introducing the all these multiverse people. characters yeah. and the right. idea of the multiverse. and But really, Kingpin is yeah. the constant. He, yep. He's the bad guy that they're, they're up against. Yep. And of course, he's got all the goons. But... It's him, and it's his story of yeah. why is he doing this? He has great motivation. Yeah, yeah. Another pretty, I mean, very sympathetic. He's villain. he is to my memory. Yeah, the only supervillain to defeat and kill Spider Man. That's right on screen. That's right. You're absolutely right. He does it. He does it. He's, he we we watch him do it. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. It's shot. It's a shocking uh, moment. It is a shocking moment. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> he delivers it though. Like I said. You, you get it. I mean, when you get the backstory, when you get all that, and you get his kind of desperation um, from what happened, uh, it's it's Absolutely. really impactful. Yeah. And so I had to give it to him because as great as the animation is, without the voice, you're not getting those nuances and you're yeah. not getting that really emotional performance that's carrying you through it. Definitely. And again, he brings the menace. He brings the scary. Yeah. But... Yeah. He also has these emotional moments that really draw you into the real human drama of that character. Absolutely. And so Absolutely. for that reason, he made it in. He did my number five. <laughs> That's a great pick. I yeah. love it. Love that. Super strong pick. For my number five, the rest of my list is fun. Okay. I'll tell you. I'll tell okay. you. Okay. The rest of my list, it's a bunch of fun guys. Okay. Cool. A bunch of fun people just <laughs> hamming it up. I love ham. Yeah. I love cheese. Yes. A ham and cheese sandwich. I think I can honestly, get this next. Ham, ham and cheese sandwich is all I really want from one of these movies. Does he have ham in his name? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's <laughs> hamming it up big time. We're talking about Justin Hammer, folks. We're talking about Justin Hammer from yes. Iron Man 2. Yes. Okay. I'll tell you why this is one of the greatest <laughs> casting and one of the greatest performances. Yeah. We've First ever of all, seen. We should establish this. Yes. Justin Hammer in the comics is nothing like nothing this. Nothing like this Hammer. at all. No, 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 no. If we were going for comic book accuracy, no, no. he would fail. That's but correct. Who cares? Because who cares about that? Because the, this is the so movie, much better. The yes. movie is so enhanced by this <laughs> choice. That's exactly to correct. To go with Sam Rockwell. Yeah. As yeah. Justin Hammer, who is kind of the. <laughs> the. The. I don't. I don't know how He's to say it. He's the dark reflection of Tony. Yes. But, but uh, 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 a a worse version. He, oh, well, he's in, bad in, in many ways. Yes. He's, yeah, yes, exactly. He's not as good at building what's so, suits. What's so cool is this he's movie. Not as charming. This because yeah. this movie also gives us Ivan Drago, who's great. Ivan Drago. Is that not Rocky his name? Four. Oh, that's Rocky Four. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of Ivan, Ivan Vanko. Vanko. <laughs> Ivan Vanko. Other one. The other. Mickey the other. Burke. The other yeah. Russian villain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not Dolph Lundgren. Not Mickey Dolph Lundgren. York. No, no, Mickey York. Who's also <laughs> terrific in this movie. Oh, he's fantastic. And he is very he wants, technologically he minded, <laughs> but he has no personality. Right. Very technologically yeah. minded, no personality. That's a good point. Justin Hammer? You bring him together. He has all personality. <laughs> he has no brains <laughs> at all. It's at all. True. It's so true. He has so many together standout. Together, they make Tony Stark. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they, they had to join forces. He has so many standout moments of <laughs> utter hilarity. Yeah. 
Um, but what makes him what makes him kind of I think I think an interesting villain mm. is he is very much what a wealthy but somewhat youthful businessman today behaves like. Yes, hundred percent. He's just this erratic, nerdy, <laughs> silly, so bizarre, always saying weird stuff, self obsessed, always like, narcissist, trying to do cool things but not looking cool. Exactly, at all. exactly. He's trying way too hard to. You're a Elon Musk. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah sure, sure. <laughs> it's just it's just a bizarre and and frankly just joy filled performance. Yeah, that I love watching. Hundred percent. Every frame he's in that movie, I just can't help but smile. I mean, <laughs> it's just great. It's so just true. great. So good. So true. So great, he's, he's my choice. number five. He he's had to make my top five. five. He had to make it. He's great. I, like you said, <laughs> I could watch him all day. I could watch him all day. Um, I'm going to go over to the MCU. Okay. Okay. Um, Let's have a lot of a, a lot of MCU pick. Yeah. Let's have a lot of parallels. Well, Jeff Hammer was just an MCU. MCU. I, other than that. yeah. 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 MC um, Hammer. <laughs> that's what it should be called. Now. Absolutely. Into the um, Hammerverse. Armor Wars. Hashtag bring back Justin Hammer for Armor Wars. Yes, please. Um, I'm going into the cosmic realm. Oh. With. Are Tom, you counting? Okay. Tom Hiddleston. Is oh, Loki. Hiddleston is Loki. Okay. Okay. Because Loki, you know, introduced in the first Thor. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. I mean, great performance it's my Great. second it's my second favorite loki performance is in the first thor movie your first is dark world the first is dark yeah, world you're you're in the minority there. i know, That's okay. I That's know. Okay. Um, he is phenomenal in dark world he is uh, he, he's great in everything he's great in he's great in ragnarok he's great in his show yeah um he's great in the avengers movies for sure um so i really like his performance all the way through the mcu um but specifically that first film i just feel like Another one where you really sympathize, you you get his backstory, you understand yep. where he's coming from, you understand why he's doing all these yeah, things. Yeah, you know, I did it for us, Father, uh-huh, uh-huh. for you, you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 for yeah, all yeah. of us. Right. He really thinks what he's doing. He's really helping everyone. Right. Of course, it's all selfishly motivated. And he has though. such a constant. Um, I love his relationship with Thor. Really. Yes. Yes. Because it's very like Thor really loves his brother. Yeah. He really wants to. Well, trust they love him. each other. Yeah. But but Loki always has that little hint of jealousy. Sure, you know, sure. because their father kind of favors Thor. Yeah, and so um, and Loki always has to. He always feels like he has to prove himself. Yeah. over Thor. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and he does it through his own ways, the the, sure. the mischief and the trickery and yeah, all of these things. And Hiddleston just delivers things that. that things that Thor is bad at. Exactly, Thor is bad at subtlety. Yes, right. He's right. bad at being sneaky. <laughs> he doesn't get it. He doesn't see it right in front of his face. Exactly, he doesn't get yeah. that his brother's yeah, turned yeah, yeah. on him. It's what makes uh, them a really fun pair. They are. They're a perfect pair. And and I think, you know, Hiddleston delivers all the charm, yeah. all the charisma, all the fun, all the kind of sly, enough to warrant, witty stuff. Enough to warrant him appearing in probably, he's probably the most reoccurring villain in the MCU. Easily. Easily. And he has his own show. So two it's seasons. Two seasons of his own show. And where they ended up on that Loki show, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Perfect, is, perfect ending. Finale is character. great. Yeah. Perfect ending. Terrific. That's a great pick. I love so it. That's your, number, that's your number six. That's my six. So what do you okay. have? Your six. Number six for me. I'm going to have to go with. We talked about Loki. Mm-hmm. He's got his own show. I'm going to go with another villain that's got his own show. Colin Farrell as the penguin. Oh, wow. That was my next one. Oh, really? Yep. Okay. I'm glad I took that's it. That's why I didn't go with Danny DeVito. Yeah. 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 The um, penguin. We've got to talk about the penguin for a minute. The this show. It's the best show on TV. It's the best show currently airing. Hundred percent. Um, there's so many great performances in that. Yeah. Sophia yes. is a standout as Clancy like, Brown as Clancy Elvador Brown. Maroon. I love that he's in it. He's actually in it because Clancy Brown, it's when he does a live action thing, mm-hmm. usually he'll like show up. Yeah. Like do a few few things right. and then he'll be out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's in it. He's, he's in, in it. He's almost every episode. Yeah, he's yeah, showing up and he's yeah. doing his stuff. Right. And he's terrific. Yeah. That whole cast oh, is just, great. they're all great. working overtime. The, the kid, he, I've Victor never seen him in anything. Fantastic. He's phenomenal. Yeah. He's doing such a great job. Yes. But Colin Farrell, we talked about it before. He's a, he disappears into this role. Disappears. Both physically. Oh, yeah. And performatively. 100%. His voice. Yeah. His, his, his voice. His, his hobble. His, his I mean, limbs. literally every. Yeah, you can't. Uh, there's so many facets to the character yeah. that he just 
totally plays yeah. perfectly every episode. Yeah. And in the movie, of course, too. Well, but... that's what I wanted to talk about is as as great as that show is at really giving us the breadth of that character mm-hmm. and having us spend every day with him and see what he does every morning, yep. see his mom, yeah. to see him, you know, in his shabby apartment <laughs> and um, hang out with all these people that he's always yeah. around. Yeah. Uh, that movie, The Batman, mm-hmm. as uh, as small of a part as he really is in it, right. he's a standout. 100%. He's a standout as as this larger than life personality yes. Yes. who is really weaseling his way through yes. this seedy underbelly yep. of Gotham. Yep. You can definitely see the the comic uh, operatic big character of the Penguin sure. shining through sure. in this new lens. Yep. This new kind of gritty, mm-hmm. grimy, mm-hmm. but still kind of uh, mob bossy, mafiosa uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, gravitas that it's he a, brings to it's it. It's a great balance. Yeah. Because like you're saying, he, he could easily take it into Burgess Meredith, sure. Adam West TV show, sure. hamming it up, yeah. penguin guy. With the monocle. But, laughing like a penguin. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Because he is a very big personality. Sure. But it's grounded in this reality uh-huh. of this version of Gotham that yeah. feels totally real. Yep. And he just feels like a real person that you could see yeah. in a city like this. And I think what the show is doing really well is it's showing us Oz as somebody who is done being stepped over. Yeah. He's yeah, done being exactly. the rug. Right. You know? Yeah. He's ready to step into his own. Yes. And he sees this opportunity mm-hmm. of vulnerability mm-hmm. and he's seizing it. Yes. And it's just, the show is unraveling into yeah. s- such chaos. It is. It's so fun to watch. It is so much fun. You to never know him, what's going to happen To next. see him always struggle to be on top. Yes. Because yeah. he's always the underdog. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And whatever situation he's in, yeah. it makes you kind of like him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. It's terrific. I, I love listening to the Companion podcast at the end of every episode. Yes. I don't know if you've heard it, but it's phenomenal. I have not listened to it yet. I need um, to check it out. They have... A, a cycle of different guests for every episode mm. that come on cool. but uh yeah hearing matt reeves talk about mm. in the first episode mm-hmm. building this character yeah. and kind of where he wants the character to end up and kind of okay. where they're going okay it's really cool great seeing them do that with this yeah. character can't wait terrific. to see what happens i'm next. glad they gave him this yes chance yes. to flesh this character I agree. Out I agree. It's, it's he's worthy yep for sure great selection great actor great performance all right, we're moving on. I'm going back into the X-Men world. Okay. Huge X-Men fan. You're number seven. Number seven. X2. X-Men United. <laughs> okay. Brian Cox as Colonel William Stryker. Okay. We've had many Stryker performances. <laughs> many Strikers. Yeah. Danny yeah. Houston. A new kid. <laughs> a new kid. The other yeah. guy. The other guy. That guy. The one who was in the post credit scene. The place. Yeah, the one who right. was in the commercial for exactly. Wendy's. Right. The one who was, you know, <laughs> on the show. every time he's every time he's in a shot, it's a different actor. <laughs> right. This actor, Ryan Cox, he's yeah. phenomenal. He probably everything. He probably has the most screen time of any striker. Easily, easily. He's he's the main villain of this film. Yeah. All the way throughout throughout the whole film. Yep. And another one that just brings this weight to this character that yeah. makes you feel like he's been through it. Like uh-huh, he's uh-huh. been in war. Yeah. He's a soldier. He knows what how to do this stuff. Very intelligent yep. character. Um, and single-minded in his mission against mutants. Definitely. Um, hates mutants. Um, but the, the great thing about this performance and this character and the, the way they wrote this is his son is a mutant. Yeah. Um, and his son, you know, he explains this whole backstory about, you know, how... Um, you know, his his wife killed herself to sure. try to kind of escape her, her their son's illusions. He's kind of this right. mind yeah. master. Yeah. And so that whole backstory added on top of you, that makes you understand, okay, here's mm-hmm. why he's trying to do all this. And he's he's he doesn't hate mutants necessarily. He respects them and wants to use them for his own end. Sure. So that's very yeah. different from some other characters the X-Men have fought. Yeah, it's like not, Bolivar it's Trask, not, who wants to capture right. them all. It's not pure prejudice. On it's not pure prejudice. Right. He sees their value, yeah. mm-hmm. but he sees exactly. them as less than human. Yeah, sees them as... Exactly, exactly. And so it's a great performance. He brings all that kind of smarmy um, attitude to it. It's kind, of more, it's kind of a more scary character than oh, someone yes. like Trask. Oh, yes, I agree. Or even like a Magneto. I agree. 
I agree a hundred percent. Um, he's the scariest villain I think they've ever faced off against, which is crazy to say because he doesn't he's have any powers. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, exactly. But yet he infiltrates the X mansion and is able to, you know, capture so many of them and yeah, yeah. Uh, holds his own against them for a while. Um, using, but, using the, the tool of fear yes. against the X-Men. Exactly. Which is really their, their greatest weakness. Yes, exactly. The fear of others. Well, because they're, they're, they're out there to protect those who hate and fear them. Yeah, exactly. That's their whole purpose of the X-Men. Exactly, exactly. And this guy takes that to such an extent that they have to, they have to fight him. Yeah. And so Brian Cox, I think, easily the best striker we've ever had. Um, great actor. Brought so much to that role. Definitely. Um, every scene he has. I mean, he has so much in- great interactions with, of course, Wolverine. Yep. Who, you know, their backstories are all tied together. And so he's kind of like toying with Wolverine right, in some scenes, right, you sure. know, and Definitely. it's really a great, interesting performance. Yeah. So I've always, it's always stayed with me ever since I saw that in theaters back That's in great. That's a great kind of out of the box pick that I, w- I wouldn't have thought of. But yeah. Yeah. X2, I mean, it's such a great movie. Such a terrific film. It is. Yeah, and he's, all right. He's really excellent with that. On to your seven. What do you got? My seven. Yeah. I'm going to go with my favorite actress of all time. Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Mary Elizabeth Winstead as Royal Pain. <laughs> oh, yes. She is Royal Pain in Sky High. Yes, of course. Uh, Gwen Grayson. Um, right. Which, Alter ego. Yeah, yeah. Gwen Grayson. <laughs> uh, <laughs> two of my favorite comic book characters, Gwen Stacy and Dick Grayson. Oh, um, nice! Yeah. Um, yeah, Gwen Grayson, right? As Royal Pain, yeah. Right, this is this right, is yeah. such a fun performance because uh, she's the girlfriend for most of the movie. Yes, she's yeah, kind you have of no idea she's a villain. The popular yeah. girl, right? Um, right. But there's this constant undertone of she used to be a nerdy kid, a nerdy kid. She used to oh, be yeah. kind of a social right, outcast, right? Right. Yes, and she was underappreciated yeah. for her powers mm-hmm. for a mm-hmm. long time, mm-hmm. right? And it's kind of her history that kind of bubbles to the top that turns her to a villain. Mm, so there's a great um, there's a great deal to do here with this role because you want her to be to the audience the pretty girl that you want the audience to fall in love with, just like Will is. Yeah, 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 exactly. Right. And she has to be sincere in that. Yeah, yeah. But the character is is playing this character. Yes, she's she's putting on this role exactly. of this, this is not who she really is. Yeah. Pretty popular girl mm-hmm, mm-hmm. who is really a supervillain, really yeah. the greatest supervillain of all time. If you ask her, uh, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Maybe even if you ask Commander, I don't know. Eh, probably the greatest he's ever faced. <laughs> um, she's terrific. So yeah. so yeah, Sky High we've talked about before has this great kind of comic book come to life aspect to it, mm-hmm. and what grounds the movie is it's high school drama. Yeah. So making the popular, nice, pretty girl mm. into your villain and into yeah. right. the, the kind of comic booky right, right. villain and have that be the twist yes. and the big emotional yeah. uh, crux of the yeah. movie it's is good. very cool. It's good. It's good. It's it a difficult really thing well. to pull off, but yeah. she does a great job at both being mm-hmm. that kind of, sneaky and a little manipulative mm, mm-hmm. at first mm-hmm. into just full-blown villain full-blown right, revenge right. just screaming at the top of her lungs yeah, angry yeah, right uh she has that awesome suit of armor yeah it is cool looking. the pacifier that turns right. people into babies right, right. it's just great it's it just is, terrific it is. her good. plot is also one of my favorites yeah I'm yeah, going to turn everyone into turn babies. turn all the world's greatest superheroes into babies and raise them as superheroes <laughs> super villains. villains yeah terrific terrific That's a great idea but yeah, her performance really again, you have that, that dichotomy of her being a character that you want the audience to fall in love with. Yep. And then the twist of her being the villain is really what makes that yeah, work. I so, agree. It's I terrific. Agree. Yeah. It's a good pick. It's a good pick. It's a fun <laughs> one. Um, I'm going to go back over to the MCU okay. and pick a character who we all wanted to become a villain for so long. Okay. Um, okay. Because this character in the comics is known for having a villainous streak and uh the actress they got to play her is perfect it's elizabeth olsen as scarlet witch okay and doctor strange in the multiverse of madness yeah yeah every time i watch this movie i like it more really oh god it's so much fun it is a lot of fun it's so sam raimi yeah. you know it's got those great stylistic camera moves uh-huh. and uh-huh. 
The Deadites. Um, the Deadites. This movie has Deadites. zombies. It's got zombies. Has, You're right. It has like it does. demony zombie monster people. It has a a cloak of the damned. <laughs> exactly. Which is one of the coolest things yeah. ever. Yeah. A a cape made of dead demons. We're gonna bring back the dead Doctor Strange right. zombie man. Right. Possess him. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so Elizabeth Olsen, you know, having played Wanda Maximoff for a few years. Yeah, since Age of Ultron at that point. Yeah. In a while. It's almost um over over 10 almost 10 years yeah yeah um getting to turn the character uh uh-huh. this way in wandavision in wandavision right started in wandavision yeah right and this was to me a lot of people felt like they went back on what they did in wandavision i felt like it was the natural progression no, of what I was going to happen next yeah. and she gets to i feel like here again she's at her most confident sure you know, yeah, because um, she's she's very young, very young in, in Age of Ultron. I want right? to say she's like sixteen. Yeah, she's like learning. Yeah, you know, see her in Civil War, like learning all this stuff. Yeah, and yeah, Infinity War and all that. So here, she's at her most confident, her most powerful. Yeah. Um, another one, great motivation. She's got these kids she lost. She wants to get them back for sure, and she gets to play off. Of course, Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange yeah. several times, which all their scenes together are great conversations yep. they have. Definitely. Um, about you know what it is to be a hero and all these different things. And then the scenes she gets to play as Tommy and Billy's mom yeah. in the alternate reality yep. um, is also great. And then, you know, she of course takes over that Wanda's body. Right, right. And she does all of this crazy stuff in the, you know, fighting all the Ultron bots. So many and... great visual visualizations yes. of her psychic powers. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. The red that they're us- using. And scene... yeah, I love that the scene in Kamartage, mm-hmm. but it's all the reflections. Yeah, that she's that's a great one. Trying to get through. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The gong. And right, like right. The crawling puddle through. And and stuff, then like yeah. The, yeah. Creepy, so cool. Creepy so cool. stuff. Yeah. And then there's scenes where she's like, hobbling along you know and 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 trying to chase them yeah yeah and it's just it's getting to see her do things that she had never done before that she had prevented herself from doing right exactly exactly but i'm just talking about even the actress elizabeth Wilson hadn't hadn't gotten to that point yet yeah in in the character's journey right and i love seeing that and seeing that come to fruition for sure um i just thought she nailed it i thought uh it was still emotionally engaging yep. and interesting and, and 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 fun to watch, but also just really cool. Yeah. Just the yeah. cool, crazy, evil stuff that she was throwing out there was really, Definitely. really fun, too. Definitely. So, great actress, great role. Um, we're on to your number eight. Number eight, I'm going to have to go with Keep It in the MCU, um, which I love to do, but I'm going to keep it in the MCU with another one of my favorite... Uh, MCU villains. Okay. I'm going to go with Killmonger. Ah, yes. Michael B. Jordan. Great one. Killmonger. Great one. Um, this, this role has been talked to death about how great it is yeah. and how, how amazing this performance is. But right. really, it it, it is uh, it's a level of personality and uh, swagger mm. and, and like this sinister but very real anger yeah behind the character oh yeah that is a great contrast to t'challa and his upbringing and his calm personality yes, right his kind of suppressed yeah uh princely yeah, yeah demeanor yeah, right um and then and then killmonger of course being yeah. this character who was taken out of mm-hmm. the privilege of wakanda mm-hmm. and was given nothing yep. in return exactly Making his character be this dark what if of yeah. T'Challa. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and have and using that as a platform, as a commentary of uh just like American society mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. and uh it's just so interesting. Yeah. And Michael B. Jordan elevates that material to a level of uh a real uh earnest heart mm-hmm. to that character. For sure. He really brings this grounded, personable, relatable uh, very sorrow and anger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, he's very likable. Very charismatic, very, very likable, very uh, cool. He's very cool. cool. He's just cool. He's very cool. You know, I mean, from that opening scene in the museum, yeah. it's like 
his whole look and demeanor. And it's a different and kind of role for through. Michael B. Jordan. This is yeah. not Creed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I agree. This 100%. is not Creed. No, not at all. This is totally different. Yep. Yep. It's a yeah. very unique MCU villain, too. I mean, among sure. all the MCU villains, he really stands out. Yeah. Yeah. Great pick. All right. Well, we've only got two left now. I'm on my number nine. <laughs> I'm going back. Here it is, guys. I think I'm going back to the X Men world. He's going back to X Men. Yeah. I've got to. Okay, I've all got right. To. It's too good. He's too good. It's Kevin Bacon as Sebastian, Sebastian Shaw. Shaw. Yeah. In X Men First Class. This that's is a good another pick. one. That's this an unexpected is... pick. Yeah. I like it's another it. Though. One that, that's. I feel like doesn't get enough praise. Yeah, yeah. He's so good because you remember, he starts off as Schmidt, the yeah. German yeah. scientist. Right. And he's speaking German. Yep. And he's got the stash and the glasses and totally different look. Totally different. Like, and, and, yeah. and, and really totally different performance. Like there's different characters. Right, really. yeah, yeah. The way he's playing off of, you know, trying to get, you know, young Magneto to, to do all this stuff. Yep. And manipulating him and everything. And then jumping ahead yeah. to the 60s, and we have him as Shaw, where he's this very suave, very wealthy character who's kind of manipulating global political spheres yeah. To, yeah. to like, you know, create this whole huge plot that he has. Um, and it's just, again, it's like night and day performances. Almost. Definitely. But yet there's, I mean, there's still some continuity there, but it's just really good to kind of get two performances in one. But when he's Shaw and when he's confronting the X-Men. Yeah. Again, uber confidence. I mean, this guy, nothing can defeat him, right? No, I mean, no. why, yeah, yeah. why would he be scared of anything? Yeah. He's you know lived I mean? that long. He's he, lived he that feels long. feels immortal. His, board, his, his mutant ability is to absorb energy. Yeah. So literally a general pulls a grenade on him. He's like, I'll blow us up. He's like, go ahead. And he grabs yeah, it and yeah. pulls the pin. Yeah. And so he plays that really well. Just one of those characters like, you can't hurt me, whatever you do. He walks in. He, he just strolls into wherever. I mean, he strolls into that government facility. They're all yeah. shooting at him. He's just standing there, you know, just looking around. Yeah, him. yeah, yeah. It's just, I love stuff like that. And I think that's such a great performance. He really pulls that off. He's... uh He's again, he's very, he, he's very, um, what's the right word? Um, abrasive too. like the way he sure. even deals with his henchmen, you yeah. know, like he doesn't treat them well at all. Sure. They're just kind of with him because they think he's going to yeah. win. Everyone is beneath him. Everyone is beneath him. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone yeah. Yeah. Is beneath him, I mean, he, sure. he is, he is a literal Nazi. He's a hundred percent. So a so hundred percent. He is, he's the ultimate Nazi fantasy. Yes. Yes. Um, exactly. He's, be he believes he is the perfect human being. Right. And everyone really is beneath them. Everyone's beneath everyone them. Everyone is an inferior race right. to him. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to annihilate everyone. That's his pl plan. So annihilate everyone. Whoever survives, they'll join me and we'll create a new world. Yeah. We're the yeah. strongest. Right. Survive. Right. 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 Um, but it's a really good performance. And Kevin Bacon, you just don't. You wouldn't expect I, him to do that. When I heard like it was him, I, I remember just going, why is he going to be the villain in this movie? <laughs> this makes no sense. Yeah. But he pulled it off. That's, that's, one that's those, a great pick. It's that's, one of those outside yeah, the box yeah, casting definitely, picks definitely. that really worked. Yeah. I'm so expected. I had to include that. Good um, one. I love all right. It. So that's my number nine. What's your nine? My number nine is Joker from Joker Flea Doo, played by <laughs> Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix, of course. Whackin Phoenix? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, first name Whackin. I know. Last name Phoenix. I've got two Jokers on my list. I didn't want That's to have amazing. two Jokers, but I think I've got. I them. almost had two of one character on my list, but I ended up changing the name. Um, <laughs> uh, tell us why this is a Joaquin movie. Phoenix. This is a movie that has just released. Yeah, highly uh, controversial. Highly controversial. <laughs> Everyone hates it for some reason. They don't get it. That's okay. You don't get it. You don't get the joke. I mean, <laughs> you don't you're get just, the joke. You're just like him at the end of Joke going. You wouldn't get it. You wouldn't get it. You, you wouldn't get it. it. It's hilarious. <laughs> you wouldn't get it. <laughs> Um, this is a great role. Yeah. yeah As, and he's really not playing Joker. He's playing Arthur Fleck. Right. That's the whole point right. of the movie. Exactly. Arthur Fleck is the most miserable, like, depressing, mm -hmm. lowly uh, loser character. Yeah. Ever. Right. And people only care about him when he's Joker. Yeah. When he's exactly. pretending to be Joker. Exactly. Exactly. 
Um, so there's a lot of subtlety and psychology mm. and continuity mm -hmm. to keep track of with his mm. character. Right. And it's, it's, it's very impressive when an actor can show you such a gradual and sometimes drastic change sure. in personality mm -hmm. over the course of a film. And on top of that, this is a musical. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you have all these musical performances yeah. that Joaquin's going to have to uh, fit in and, and yeah. get into that character's head and mm -hmm. his, his point of view mm -hmm. right at the right time. And how would he sing it? And how would he move? How would he sing it? How would he move? All of that. And is this him really singing here or is this him singing in his head here? Right. Because right. that's played differently as well. Yep. Good because point. both of those things happen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a really it's a really fascinating performance yeah. that really carries the whole movie. Honestly, hundred percent. I mean, as great as uh, Lady Gaga is, of course, she's terrific. Of course, but um, yeah, Joaquin Phoenix's performance here is just stellar. Yep. I mean, you really you you get his his um uh, his like his cowardice mm -hmm. and his like pathetic humanity there yep. and also his like despicable uh narcissist uh right. anger right against yes. everyone but himself <laughs> right because he blames everyone but himself mm -hmm. for where he is exactly exactly and that's really what the the his fans in the context of the movie mm -hmm. uh feel as well that's right. that's the Joker power fantasy. Yes, yes. Exactly. Is the world made you this way? Mm -hmm. It's not your fault. Nothing's sure. your fault. True. You were great. You were pure. Right. Until the world made you into this monster. Mm -hmm. There's no personal responsibility. Yeah. So it's a really interesting character mm -hmm. who is not the character from the comics. No. Who is Arthur Fleck though? Yes. Yes. And again, that's the whole point in the movie is people don't care about Arthur Fleck. Right. They care about Joker. Yeah. And what I kind of love about the reason people hate this movie <laughs> yeah. is because he's not Joker. Right. Kind of is the whole point of the movie. Yes, yes. Is, yeah, people don't like it because yeah. he's not Joker. Yeah. yeah. It's great. It's great. It's great. It's fantastic. It's such a, such a fascinating role, too. Very interesting. Very, yeah, very <laughs> unique performance. Yeah. I can't imagine. A difficult role. Beginning to tackle that. Forget about Especially that. in Philae Adu. I mean, in the first Joker right. movie, you it's have a little reference. more straightforward. Yeah, it's yeah. a it's a Scorsese ish mm -hmm. taxi, taxi driver, driver King, King of comedy. comedy thing, but Felia Du is like totally way out thing. of the box. Totally its own thing. Yeah, yeah. Never so. seen anything like it. Terrific, terrific. That's my number nine. Highly recommend. Um. All right, this is it. I don't Rounding bet. out our top tens. That's right. Wow, what a journey it's been. Yeah. Um. I'm going to go with Clancy Brown as Lex Luthor Ooh. in Superman, Batman, Public Enemies. This is a good pick. This is a good pick. Clancy, it's, a good already, pick because, it's a good pick because it's Clancy Brown. He's the best. Yeah. He's the best Lex we've ever had. Yep. Um, again, talk about bringing gravitas to a yeah. role. He, yeah. he, he has this great he gets voice. It. He gets the character of Lex. He understands him. He understands this is a broken individual yep. who just wants to prove himself. He wants to be the best. Yeah. He's, he's not Superman. In a world with Superman, yeah. it's hard to be the best. Exactly. Um, he's got everything money can buy, um, but he's got no friends. <laughs> he's got no family. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's, it's Public Enemies is a great performance from him because yeah. this is where Lex finally gets the chance to do something about this like yeah. he you know as a businessman he's like kind of you know always been at odds with superman but in the public sure he's been he's he's you know a good guy sure you know? sure when he becomes president yeah. of the united states yeah now he has real power sure and he can actually do something about superman and batman yeah mostly superman um and so he literally says superman you know it frames him first yeah for this crime and then uh sends everybody else out after him and it's pretty wild to see it all unfold it is yeah public enemies that's and that's a great movie he does a great job because also another thing that's interesting about this lex performance based because he of course voiced him in the dc animated universe yep, for yep. years but this movie 
he gets to go a little cuckoo. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You find out that he's been juicing with some kryptonite concoction um, to basically make himself stronger, but also make himself able to, you know, stand up against Superman. Right, right. And so you kind of see unhinged Lex a little sure, bit here, sure. more than more than usual. Yeah, yeah. So he, you, you still get to see him as kind of the suave, cool-headed, you know, um, president, public persona, yep. Lex, kind of charming. Yep. But then you get to see him behind the scenes. And yeah. He's going yeah. nuts. So. And yeah, definitely. He's, yeah, he's, we we, we definitely do see. So, yeah, a lot of it's cool. multifaceted. Yeah. Aspects of his character. Yes. Really cool. Exactly. That's a good pick. Yeah, so public enemies. It's is one I, I wouldn't have thought about. Really but. underrated. Yeah, that was that, that was a good pick. Yeah, yeah, for I like sure. that a lot. I so, like that. Clancy Brown, he's one of the best of all time. He is terrific. If only we were doing shows, we put Rosie in there, number one. Of course, Michael Rosenbaum. Michael Rosenbaum, your favorite. You're the best. Life. You're the best. Likes well, everyone yeah. knows it. Everyone James always Gun, says James it. Gunn knows. I know. Nicholas Holt knows. I am. I'm. I'm, I'm really I, excited I to see what yeah, this take I, on I, I is going to be. I am interested in seeing. Um, but let's give it. Bring this to a close with your number 10 best super villain casting yes. of all time. So do it with a directed DVD. Well, did that ever yeah. have a theatrical release? Never did. Unfortunately. Let's do that. Yeah. Do it with a directed DVD animated uh, feature, yes. which we love. There's plenty of those that They're are the greatest. phenomenal. Love them. Uh, I'm going to go with one of my favorites. Oh. It's Tom Kane as Ultron oh. in The Next Avengers. Wow. This is a movie I've... I've no loved. one's seen it. No one's seen it. It's a movie I've loved since I was a kid. No one knows it exists. <laughs> it is a performance and a voice mm. that has always stuck with me. Yep. It is forever to me the voice of Ultron. Which and, is shocking and, because Tom Kane, of course, voices SpongeBob Squarepants. Yes, 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 of course. Right? Oh, no, that's Tom Kenny. Tom Kenny. That's Tom Kenny. I'm sorry. Yeah. Not Tom Kane. Yeah. Slightly Tom different. Kane, Tom Kane, though, does a lot of um, uh, Star Wars stuff. Tom Kenny right? is in Sky High, though. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. He is. Good point. Not a villain. Not a villain. Yeah. No, he's Chester. That's right. Um, anyways. <laughs> Tom Kane. Sorry. Tom Kane. And yes. yes, Tom Kane is Ultron. Uh, it's a chilling performance. Oh, Because yeah. it is the coldest. Yes. And most just brutal. Intense. Version of this character I've ever seen. Yeah. 100%. Um, Puts James Spader this to is, game. Oh, yeah. 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 It makes it. <laughs> I like, mean, Spader, it. of course, he wasn't trying to do what Tom sure, Kane was sure, doing. Sure. 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 Different if version you of the. Compare them. This version is the same. But even, even the what if version of Ultron doesn't hold a candle to this one, in my opinion. I agree. Because Ultron in this, it's, it's a dystopian world mm-hmm. where Ultron is the final villain the Avengers ever face. He defeated all of them. And he kills every single one of them. Mm-hmm. Cap, he, kill, he kills Thor, he kills, you know. Giant Man, Wasp, Black Widow. Hawkeye, Black yeah. Widow. They're all dead. They're all gone. Yeah. Only one left is Tony. That's right. And maybe Hulk. We don't know. Yeah, He's out in the wilderness maybe. somewhere, we'll I guess. See. We'll see. But <laughs> this is this is an Ultron that is purely robotic. Yes. He has Dedicated a mission. Dedicated to his mission, yep. He accomplishes his mission. Yep. Um, but he, he also has this really twisted and, and interesting vendetta against yeah. the Avengers. Yes. Yes, exactly. Where he really does hate them. Yeah. And he really does yeah. like desire mm-hmm. for them to be washed off the face of the planet. Yep. yep. Um he's he's in it sparsely throughout the movie, but yeah. uh, even at the end, yeah. he, he is just a presence that right. is never ever really defeated. He yeah. he is like pure evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always and there. It's, <laughs> it's chilling and cold yeah. and, and callous and yep. So good. So it's good. great. It's a great performance. And it's the perfect the reason that performance is so great in that movie mm-hmm. is because the protagonists are all kids. Yeah, exactly. They're yeah. all jokey, funny, right, right, silly, right. over the top children. Juxtaposed with the super serious, intense yes. bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a perfect balance. It's very, very cool. Yeah. And the only ones who could defeat Ultron mm-hmm. are kids like that. Correct. Who think Correct. way out of the box. Yeah. Who never make never, a game plan. Yeah, he can never guess what they're going to yeah, do. Yeah, they're unpredictable. They're wild. No contingency plan. <laughs> exactly. Prepare you for what these exactly. kids are going to do. Yeah. So if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend Next Avengers. I don't know where you can watch it, but find it. Yeah. Because it yeah. is well worth watching. It's so good. It's very so good. So good. Um, so that's it. That's it, folks. Those are our top 10. Best <laughs> supervillain casting yes. of all time. Let us know your list in the comments. 
We want to have a conversation with you. Maybe we, you think some of our picks are dumb. <laughs> you probably do. Let us know. Which ones do you think should not have made the list? <laughs> um, and which ones do you think should have made the list that didn't? Heath Ledger's Joker didn't make it. Uh-oh. 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 We're going to comic book movie jail on the internet. Um, sorry. So let us know what you think. Not really sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're both on Letterboxd, so you can follow us there. Those links are in the description. The Real World is on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You can follow us there. Um, check out all the videos on the channel. We'll bring, be bringing more videos to you very soon. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be talking all things movie related. So thanks again. Thanks Make for having sure me. you hit that like button. Yes. Hit, hit the subscribe. subscribe. Hit, the, hit bell the bell so you get notified, notified of all our videos. Our videos. And, and we'll, we'll see, see you next time right here on The, the Real, Real World. World. Woo!